Hey everyone, welcome back to Phil Engineering. Now when it comes to a machine shop, there are two things you simply cannot miss. The first thing is a milling machine, which we already took care of in the previous video series. And the second thing, you may guess, is a lathe. So of course I bought one. This is a Colchester Master 2500, which has been in private ownership since the late 80s. Now sadly the previous owner passed away about 6 years ago and since then the machine has not been running a single time. So it is up to me to give at least the machine a second life. First I'm going to remove the backsplash so we can take a better look at the machine itself. In my last videos you guys told me I should do a bit moderation so everyone gets a better understanding of what I'm actually doing here. So while I'm disassembling the tailstock, let me tell you the plan of attack for this restoration. In this part I will only focus on the right side of the machine, that means everything that belongs to the bed and only after it is back together, we will shift the focus to the headstock. Alright, back to the video. Now after sitting around for 6 years, you can expect some parts to be very stuck because of oxidation. And while it wasn't too bad, I had to fight a few parts here and there. Also, most of the oil turned into something more like grease, which makes the disassembly always a bit messy. Let's pull the tailstock off and put it onto the workbench. It does look pretty good, but I'm not sure if the way wipers can be reused. Pulling out the quill was not possible at first because of a stuck part and it took the rust remover a few days to do its magic. So don't be surprised if you see this part still being assembled later in the video. Back to the machine to remove the chuck. And if you're thinking this comes off surprisingly easy, it is because I had to remove it before lifting the machine onto the trailer since the center of mass is right underneath it. Now we can start working on the carriage, first by removing the quick change tool post. And I will not reuse it because I don't like the design. I have something different in mind for this lathe. The mounting bolt was so stuck that I tried to get the indexing plate off first, but it is pinned in two places. But don't worry, we will get them in just a minute. The 
the hand wheel was also stuck, so I'm very carefully hitting it with the hammer while trying to give it a bit of support so the lead screw doesn't bend. I can definitely tell the compound was used the most when unscrewing the lead screw. It is not terrible or anything, but a new lead screw and nut would make for a good project one day. After removing the gib, I need to turn the compound upside down because the lead screw nut blocks the top from sliding off. And of course, it was stuck too, so I pulled it out under a stack up of high speed steel blanks that came with the lathe. Let's pull out the big guns for getting these parts of the compound. And now to the cross slide. I tried really hard to get the hand wheel off, but it was just not possible and I didn't want to damage anything, so I gave up on this part. The disassembly of the cross light was something I was a bit afraid of because it behaved so strange that I almost didn't buy the machine. I thought the lead screw could be damaged which would be an absolute nightmare. And look how much play there is where the lead screw should be held captive. I wonder what's going on there. Ah. The thrust bearing lies outside of its own shielding, which got pressed together, and no, it is not broken or anything, it is completely intact. I mean, how is this even possible? But hey, cross slide problem solved. Let's pull the slide off and take a look underneath. Yeah, this will be fun to clean. One feature that I really like about this cross slide is the two piece nut construction for removing any backlash of the lead screw. I will show it in more detail in the next part when everything is clean again. Before we move on, let me quickly get this grease off so I don't get it all over me later.
All right, in order to get the apron off, the lead screw, feed rod and clutch shaft need to be pulled out, which are held in place by this end bracket. These locating pins have threads in the end, so you can pull them out with a screw, but they were slightly damaged, so I had to use a pair of tongs. Now we can just pull out the lead screw which will be an absolute nightmare to clean. Then the feed rod. And lastly, the clutch shaft. The drive blade for the lead screw and the bore of the feed rod both have a pin that is meant to shear off if they get overloaded. For a somewhat safe removal of the apron I stacked up a few pieces of wood under it and slowly lowered it with the mounting screws. I only took it one step at a time because if I drop this on the floor this project could be over. But everything went as planned and by removing a few pieces of wood I got enough space to clear the gears and get it off the machine. The last major component to remove is the saddle, which is held on by a gib at the front and another one at the back. The gibs are held in place by a set of spring clips and I could only get the rear one to slide off. The front one jammed up halfway through, but that's enough to slide the saddle off the bed. Oh, and of course it is fantastic to put a tripod right where you need to walk while handling heavy stuff. Here you can see the spring clips I talked about. The screws also hold on the guide rails, so this is coming apart pretty fast now. Again we have these way wipers where I have to see if I can reuse them. They have springs inside to press them against the waist which is actually a really cool design. And there we have it, a naked lathe. Since this assembly went actually way faster than expected, let's get at least the base of the machine cleaned up so we can see a bit better what we're working with here in terms of condition. For cleaning I'm always following the same plan of attack. 
spray everything down so it can take a soak for a while and then it is time for some elbow grease. Precision surfaces only get touched with towels or rags, never with scotch Bright or something that could even remotely be abrasive. That would be a nice way to destroy your machine. Of course, this takes ages with only using soft stuff, but it is worth it. On painted surfaces, I use scotch Bright, or if the dirt is really hard on there, I like to scrub it with a brass wire brush. And would you look at this, there's actually some nice paint. And you have to admit, it is quite satisfying seeing all this stuff coming off in one wipe, just like in those commercials. And I have to say, this is already looking extremely promising. I don't think this machine had a hard life. The last thing we're going to do is cleaning the headstock. My spray bottle is about to die, but I don't care. I'm careful not to scratch anything, so only towels on the printed plates. And this is how it looks after I clean the rest of the machine. Don't know about you, but I think buying it was the right choice. So this about wraps it up for this part, but I'm extremely stoked to get it back together. I think it will turn out amazing. Now this video was a bit shorter, but in the next one we have a lot to do, so stay tuned. I really hope you enjoyed following along and thanks for watching. <laughs>